So um, in today's video, we're going to be talking to Rhoda, who is currently working at Microsoft, right? So she's going to be sharing some insights about her experience, basically, her recruitment experience and how she got into Microsoft, right? So these are tips that will be very useful for people who are currently recent graduates and also looking to work at Microsoft, right? So hi, Rhoda. Do you want to like tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Hi, Rhoda. Hello, um, so I'm currently a finance rotation analyst at Microsoft. Um, currently, I've been in Microsoft for about a year and eight months, right? And I've done so far about three rotations. Um, and definitely, we're going to get into that. But currently, I'm working on um, the global payroll team. And so far, it's been really exciting. Um, before Microsoft, I worked at a startup. Um, and also as an audit intern um, in one of the big fours. Um, and I also got to meet Rhoda there, so that was amazing. <laughs> and out of work, um, I'm currently working on building like my personal brand, and I'm also um, working with a startup, um, working on building a startup too. Let's just get straight into it, right? I'd like to ask you what the finance rotation program is, because I think there are a couple of people who will be hearing this for the first time. So if you can just give us a bit of background, the finance rotation program is basically. Yes, so it's basically a program for recent graduates. So whether you graduated from a bachelor's or an MBA, because I know there are people who also did like an MBA, as long as you're a recent graduate, it's a two-year program where you get to rotate across four departments. So averagely six months in each finance department. Um, and it's really good, especially if you are just getting into finance, you want to learn the ropes, especially how like maybe a global tech company operates, how do their financial processes look like, um, or you're just even thinking, you know, what do I want? What path of finance am I looking to get into? So a rotational program like that is a really good program to start with. And you get to work with like different people globally, not just in your local you know, location. So it's a really amazing program. Okay, that's awesome. So you mentioned that you get to work with different people globally. So does that mean that it would include a lot of traveling? Is it just remote working or working within Nigeria? Yeah, so the way the program works, um, you get to do three of your rotations in your home country, right? There are opportunities to travel. For example, I know some teams have much more travel compared to other teams, right? And obviously, as part of the um, FRP program, they tend to meet up occasionally or, you know, your 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 team could be having like a global meetup. Um, that doesn't happen as much. I know pre-COVID, I had ideas to travel a lot more, but yeah, they still do travel. And then your last rotation or your, it could either be your last or your second to the last, but you tend to have like an international rotation where you go physically to that, you know, country and then you work from there. Um, usually it's supposed to be for six months, but it could also depend on like your tax treaties and all of those things. But yeah, there's that opportunity. Okay. Awesome. Sounds like a very exciting opportunity, really. So I don't know if you can just tell us a little bit about like the eligibility requirement. Do you need to study finance? Do you need to finish with a particular class of degree? Do you need to have like a professional mm -hmm. qualification? Like what are the eligibility requirements? Yeah, definitely. Um, so currently, I know you have to be like a recent graduate. Um, so whether it's bachelor's or an MBA, you have to be a recent grad. Um, you don't have to, you know, have studied just finance or accounting. Related courses are also welcome, right? And even if you, like I, I would always say, if you have like an engineering background, um, or something totally unrelated, and you you know you are interested in finance, you can show some track record on your CV, give it a shot. Like, why not? There's nothing you can lose. So um, those are kind of like the key requirements. Be a recent graduate, typically maybe like one to two years or more, um, but typically one to two years <laughs> or about to graduate. Um, and you studied like a related course or you, you know, maybe are interested in finance and you want to be a shot. Um, they also tend to put things about like having, you know, maybe R or um, any other programming language or experience with Tableau or Power BI. So definitely if you don't have that, don't let it hold you back. You can definitely start a training on it, right? And, you know, put it also on your TV that you are in view. So definitely don't let that hold you back and give it a shot, put in your best and apply. 
Awesome. So you also mentioned that, okay, if for some reason maybe you studied engineering, but now you're interested in pursuing a career in finance, right? But you're able to show your track record on your CV. So what are the examples of track records that you would recommend? Is it that they should take some courses, professional qualifications or internships? What exactly is it that you can use to like demonstrate your track record or your interest in finance on your CV? Yeah. So I would say definitely work experiences would be, you know, very critical. You want to show that you've had like experience in, you know, doing finance, right? Because they want to see that you can take like, you can make like decisions in how to analyze like information. You also want to show maybe that you've taken like certifications to understand how finance is um, and how things work, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be something so formal like I can know ACCA. If you can go down that route, that would be great. Um, but even if you can't, like try, try to just show, you know, anything that could help you, right? You want to if you're at a position where you, are, you don't really have like um, the qualification at that point, you want to put as much as could help you, especially when it comes to work experience, you know, it would really boost your, your CV. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Ruda. Okay, so moving on, right, can you talk to me about the application stages, right, from up on, from when you submit an application up until when you get an offer letter, what are the recruitment stages or processes that you would have to go through? Yeah, definitely. So I'll be talking about this from my experience because I know we can slightly differ um, for people and also the timelines could have changed a bit. Um, but for me, I applied um, around October, November. That's kind of when um, I saw the application. Someone told me I apply. I was like, mm, am I sure I'm going to get this? I was like, OK, let me just give it a shot. What do I stand to lose? Um, so I applied around November, I think. Um, and then in December, around mid-December, I got like an email that I should book an interview um, for, you know, book, yeah, book a call for the interview. And I was, I was like, okay, I tried to do it. My network was terrible. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get around this later because I was like, okay. <laughs> I was beginning to get nervous. But then I eventually missed it, right? And... When I wanted to book, there were no slots available. So I sent like a thousand and one emails to like the HR person. I didn't get any response. And so I gave up and I continued searching for other jobs <laughs> because like it was, over, it was over like one month and I think almost two months, I didn't hear back. So I continued like my job search. But then one random day, I got a call from the UCK number and they're like, oh, they're from Microsoft and then they would like to kickstart the interview process. So this was around early February. So like I said, my situation was a bit different, so it would differ for other people. Um, but yes, it was three interviews with four people. So the first interview was with a senior leader. He was a CFO of one of the countries. Um, so he was really just asking me about um, what was my background, what was my motivation for applying to Microsoft and those types of questions. My second interview was with two people who are like the program managers for the finance rotation program. And then that was 45 minutes. The first one was about 30 minutes or so. Um, and here they were asked going deeper into like behavioral questions, um, all those type of scenario questions. Um, and just trying to see how I work um, and how, you know, how the how I've built, you know, capacity over like the previous times. And then my last interview was also with a senior leader, but this was with somebody in um, Mia. Um, and so this was more about like, what are my competencies? What tools can I use? Um, when I faced like challenges in my work, how did I navigate it? So those were my three um, interviews with four people. And then I was like, they're like, okay, I'm going to hear back. And I think the whole process took about like one month, those three interviews. So I heard back around March um, from the recruiter that I had successfully skilled through. And then I was to start in July. So that was kind of the time. Okay, awesome. So just to be clear, right, you said you submitted an application online and then you did three interviews back to back. There were no assessment tests or anything like that. Yeah, so like I said, it could differ, right? So maybe what I missed <laughs> could have been an assessment or it may not have been, it may just have been an interview, right? Um, but that was kind of how the process was for me. I know people have had similar timelines when I asked, but I know someone also had maybe one thing unique um, so it may differ a bit depending on, um, you know, how you applied or when, 
but typically there are always those three key interviews are like the main things and they usually i think that that's kind of like a constant okay so like that's the standard okay that's clear okay i think the question that would probably be prevalent after this video comes out would be after the financial rotation program do you get retained as a full-time staff or is it just a program after the program then you're disengaged and they tell you bye-bye <laughs> or which is it exactly yeah. yeah that's a great question um and so just one more thing before we even move forward so this is talking about like the international program so the way the frp program is structured is there is the u.s version and then there's the international one so it works a bit differently internationally than from the u.s so for this i'm addressing how my perspective has been as an international um, frp so typically they try to recruit people they can retain <laughs> right so they don't <laughs> want to go over and above so their goal actually is when you come into the program they want to train you and have you go into like your permanent role within the firm um, it's not compulsory right but that's what they actually want and desire so definitely there are opportunities to start um looking at like your full-time role there are opportunities to get, get like there, there are always opportunities whether internally or externally within the firm um and so whenever you finish your program so there is this thing that they can call early graduation so this would mean like graduating after your third rotation or you could wait until you complete your rotation and then you, you know, move into your permanent role. Typically, you can choose to take ownership, which is the most preferred method of how you graduate. So that means actively, you know, by, within like two years and four months and four different rotations, you kind of have a feel of how different teams in Microsoft work, different finance teams, and you have an idea of what your interest is. So um, you can start reaching out to maybe hiring managers that have openings on your teams or, or um, other people on the team to tell them, oh, you're interested in this particular role. Um, maybe contact me when there is an opening. But they also have a way whereby like open roles or, you know, teams that are hiring, they kind of compile it and then it's up to you to take ownership of that. So definitely I'm not one for sit down and let's see how things go. Definitely take things into your hands. And yes, those opportunities are available for you to graduate post FRP. All right, so moving forward, right? I'd like to ask you, what do you think when you stand out? out of because i'm sure a lot of people applied right so what do you think it was about you or your application that made you get that opportunity great question um i mean the recruiters <laughs> or the hiring managers be best to answer this question um uh, but i think one feedback i got from particularly um one of my interviews one of the first ones was that i let my passion show um through the role right um and i think that's critical i mean sometimes we're like passion is overrated but just being able to communicate your interest in the role like emotionally and being able to show that you've also done background work and which is one key thing um you know so before i applied for you know like before i started my interview for this role like i said i was I was already like in with a couple of other companies. I was feeling stressed out because I'd gotten like a couple of rejections. I was like, do I really want to go around this again? Um, but I actually started practicing like a whole lot. I set up mock interviews with like people. Um, I had like this document to answer like the questions, prospective questions, and then prospective answers. And I was practicing it, trying to, you know, learn how to communicate it. And I feel like that's what really helped me in my interview. So I wasn't really shocked so much. I mean, yes, there were unique questions that did pop out, but because I had been practicing continuously, I knew how to respond to those questions. Um, and also not just speak like I crammed answers, but speak, you know, from a place of passion, because I mean, I wrote the answers. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's one thing that really helped me in my interview. So practice and then being able to communicate really well. Okay, that's, that's a very insightful answer. Thank you, Ruda. Um, okay, so another question I'd like to ask you, right, is um, so now that you've gotten the opportunity, what has your experience been like? What has it been like working at Microsoft, a, a global organization? So what has that been like for you? Yeah. Um, so prior to joining Microsoft, I was a bit doubtful. I was like, this is a tech company. Like I want to practice finance in like a global finance company. Cause that was the norm, right? At least where I am from. So a lot of people go into like big fours or 
management consulting firms. I'm like, okay, so I'm going into a tech company. Like, how big could their finance division be? And I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked by how big it was. Like, there are so many parts to their finance team. Like, there are so many finance divisions. And my experience has been really amazing. Like, it has been so eye-opening moving from one part of the business to another. So having experience, how does Microsoft operate on the field? So by the field, I mean outside of the US. How do we sell to our customers? How do we uh, position ourselves, you know, for versus like the competition? How do we put, you know, the cloud strategy of Microsoft first and put our customers first? Um, and then moving to a more operational side of the business, for example, I'm currently on like global payroll. So I get to see and get to have like deep insights into how different countries, vacation policies, how different countries payroll actually operate. And it, at first I joined, it was overwhelming. Like, especially you have to, every six months, you would have to go through like a learning curve because you are coming in new. You were probably already building momentum and then you had to compile all of that knowledge try to, you know, give results and then share that knowledge with the next FRP that will be coming in while you, you are trying, you are like going on this again. So you're a completely new fresher. So you learn a lot how to onboard and how to, um, you know, like ramp up pretty quickly. Um, and then you get to learn a lot about like Microsoft as a company, you get to learn a lot about like tech companies, like you get to learn a lot about global, how to operate like on a global scale, because you're not just doing like local things you are actually gaining international experience so yeah it's been really amazing I, i'm super excited and super happy that i did this because yeah my feelings at the beginning and now are like not the same at all so. yeah that, i think that's good you, the excitement is actually showing you through the way you're speaking about the company and what you do basically right so i think um one of my final questions would be um i know that while I was doing my research, I think they also have like an HR rotation program. So I just wanted to confirm what other rotation programs are there apart from the finance rotation program. Okay, so I'm not sure if I'll have like <laughs> the answer completely, but I'll do my best. I know there is a HR one. I think there's probably a product or project management one. Um, and probably a couple of others, right? We don't exactly like, I don't know everything. I stopped the big company. Um, but <laughs> definitely you're looking for if you see an opening like apply even if there is no like rotational program like if you see the internship apply like irrespective of your location if you don't see any limitation like do not apply for digital labor in the u.s or only you're yeah, considering only only like certain countries like give it a shot because you never know what could happen from it i wish i did that <laughs> um much earlier but yeah take my tip on it if you see a role like give it your best shot because you're competing with people internationally. You're competing with like the best of people. So definitely don't be discouraged um, and keep checking portal. And internship is another pathway. You may not see a rotational program open, but if you're still a student, especially like they have a ton of internships in different teams and different divisions. So give it a really good shot, apply, and then who knows, you may land a permanent role from there. And if we also see like a rotational program open because they may just come up with a new, like something new, a team that didn't have a program before. So for example, in Nigeria, they didn't like used to recruit before and then they did. So you never know what could pop up, right? Um, so always be open. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Roda, for the time to chat with me today. Right, so if people had like follow-up questions that they wanted to, ask you where can we find you online yeah so you can connect with me on linkedin or you can send me an email um rorogoro at gmail.com like my name r then my son name at gmail.com or linkedin if you want to have like a chat and also via my linkedin with the link in my bio you can actually book a call and we could discuss more so yeah okay so like what's your full name on linkedin then yeah, Ruda or Ruby Ru. So just my name. All right. Thank you very much, Ruda, once again. It was nice chatting with you. Thank you. You too, Ruda.